Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. My name is Gary Williams, and today I'm joined by Neil Marcus. Neil, I think you would primarily describe yourself as a producer. Is that fair? That's fair enough, yeah, absolutely. I've never been quite sure what a producer is. Would you define it for me in as few words as possible? I suppose a producer is the person that finds something they want to present and finds a way of presenting it. Does a producer get involved in the creative content? It depends on the producer. Personally, I produce the stuff I would like to see and therefore my producing is completely artistically driven. So whether it's musical theatre, which I produce quite a lot of, or cabaret, which is one of my great passions, I like to deal with artists I admire or writers I admire, or even come up with the ideas. I'm doing a musical next year at the Southwark Playhouse based on the life of the lady that invented the A to Z, Phyllis Pearsall. The musical was my idea, but I then brought on the rest of the creative team and raised the money to put the show on. And so with the creative, the director that you've hired and brought on board, will you let that person just get on with it entirely or will you uh, have uh, something to say? Depends how it goes. Um, <laughs> you reserve the right. Well, I, we've got a wonderful director, a chap called Sam Buntrock, who directed um, Sunday in the Park with George on Broadway in the West End and knows what he's doing around musical theatre work. But it's not just about the director, you know... Gwyneth Herbert is the composer lyricist. I think she's an incredibly fertile lyricist and gifted composer. Diane Samuels is the book writer who wrote Kinder's Transport, which is an international hit. The team that we've assembled are all good at what they do and they all believe in the same vision of the piece. Do you think that musical theatre performers always make good cabaret performers? Not always, but sometimes. I mean, there's a very historic crossover between songs from musical theatre by Jerome Kern, Gershwin... Porter, the whole raft of people, Kander and Ebb, Sondheim, a lot of that repertoire comes from musicals. Um, in terms of the performers themselves, I think the craft of performing in cabaret is telling a story through song and revealing something of yourself. And some musical theatre performers are very adept at that, others are not. And one of the hardest parts, of course, is the patter, the way the songs link, what the narrative thread is, how you engage with the audience. I think it's particular personalities who are good at that, who may or may not come from the world of musical theatre. It seems that, that one of the, 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 the uh, difficulties is that musical theatre performers, as far as I know, are trained to observe the fourth wall. Whereas in cabaret, it's all about getting rid of it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that. Um, and it tends to be possibly more experienced actors that have a particular way of connecting with an audience because they've done traditional theatre, television, film, cabaret, a whole raft of things. And therefore, this fourth wall concept is just one of many. Um, but there are some people that have a personality that just naturally engages. Letting the audience in and revealing yourself is the most thrilling bit about being in a cabaret performance. Being up and close and getting to know the performer is the joy of it. Particularly if they're a well-known performer that they've seen in a huge theatre or on yes. the TV. The thrill of being in a small cabaret room and seeing them there live revealing something of yeah. themselves is great. And interacting with them, you know. Mm. It, it's, it's a very mutual art form. Do you think cabaret has to be in a small, cosy uh, setting, the sort of thing that we traditionally think of as being a cabaret room, or does... I mean, can cabaret be cabaret if it's in a 1,500-seat theatre? Yeah. I mean, for me, Andrea Marcovici at Pizza on the Park with 100 seats, as it was, or Liza at the Royal Albert Hall with 5,000 seats, I enjoyed both very much. And they were both great interpreters of music and lyrics, telling stories and playing with their audience. They need to have the skills to be able to play with their audience, and on a bigger scale, you need an, an artist who understands how to play to that size. But essentially, it's the same thing. It's like the definition of opera. Sondheim says, if it's in an opera house, it's an opera. If it's in a theatre, it's a musical. The definitions we don't need to get hung up on. It's just a question of, do you connect with your audience? But, I mean, for example, I'm curating a festival of cabaret in London in October, November, and one of the highlights is Michael Feinstein at the Palace Theatre. And now it has an historic connection, Judy Garland played the Palace, etc. Um, but it's a 1,500-seat it's a theatre. However, I've, Michael Feinstein and his band are experienced enough and know their audiences well enough to play intimately to a large audience. But another part of the festival is Bob Younger at the Soho Theatre, which is 100 seats. Again, Bob can do big stadia, but you can also do an intimate room. Have you seen Feinstein work a big room and a small room? Yes. Does his style of performance change? Yes, but very subtly. And I couldn't tell you exactly what it is, but I've seen him do a gig to 300 people at 
the Shaw Theatre, and I've seen him do a gig to about 1,500 people in a large repertory theatre. Um, and the connection and intimacy was just as good. And if I had to watch them both on video, I could tell you what it was, but I just know he finessed it to make it work. Yeah, as someone you've directed yourself in the past, how would you direct a newcomer to cabaret, even if they were working in a large theatre, particularly a musical theatre performer, someone coming from that background? Well, I think it's all down to material. There's no point in somebody who's 18 singing, I'm still here, unless they're doing something different. <laughs> because saying, I am it. here. Exactly. Well, that, that's fine. Or, hey, Mr. Producer. But the point is, pick stuff that reflects your personality and reflects it well. And it doesn't matter if it's established songwriters or new songwriters. And it doesn't matter if it's popular music or theatre. It doesn't matter what any of the sources are. It's just understanding what music and lyric combination works well for you and how you can use that to give something of yourself away. Then you've got a great collection of songs, but a great collection of songs isn't going to do it. What is the connection between these songs or why have you selected these songs and how do you inform your audience of that and how do you do it in a compelling way? Mm. These are all the questions that you need to consider and work on and practice and get some feedback on before you're ready to see an audience, I would say. Because a lot of people will come to Cabaret thinking, well, it's just, or I'll just put together, you know, 16 or 20 of my favourite songs and uh, and sing them. And they're all beautiful songs yeah. and I sing well, so yeah. it's bound to be a success. Yeah. But it is, there's more to it than that. It's a bit like a variety performance, isn't it? That, there's, there's no, I think your audience would get a bit confused with the proposition it's just somebody singing if it's an entertaining evening and you know this and you know whether the hook is the songs of Sinatra or a particular artist or whether it's emotions of love or whatever it is you've thought through and you know the points to change from an up-tempo number mm. to a ballad you know the bits to break you know where to have a bit of patter and bring in your audience if they're engaged or how to engage them if they're not at this point all of that comes with experience of course mm. so it's a slightly mm. different question but it's understanding those things and learning from the room and figuring out what works well and what doesn't. So next time, you can throw those two songs out, but keep that one, mm. or put that one in the second half, or use that one as the closing number. Or, and you know, new writing is very important to me, get a composer and lyricist to write you an opening and closing number mm. that suits your personality so that you've got a tailor-made piece, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I always find that, that it, I ask when people say how they, can they learn and develop their act, I think open mics are a good opportunity yeah. to do that. And when they're, it's not just about singing the songs. I say when you do an open mic, um, ha practice your patter as well, the patter that is yeah. going to set up that song. Yeah. Practice that because that sometimes can take longer to get right than yeah. learning the song. Yeah, and, and see as much as you can. See as much as you can. The people you admire, you'll learn from. The people you don't admire, you'll learn more from. We've mentioned uh, a little bit about themes, themes for a show. I, yeah. we, we mentioned whether it be, in my case, it's often Sinatra or it might be of songs of a particular composer or, or so on. Sure. But I think it's really important to have a theme, but there's a chapter in the book, I think I called it, I think I said, it's all about you. Mm. And I think it is, I think to me in, in a cabaret environment, that is the overriding thing. Okay, we may say it's an evening of songs by this composer or from this particular era, yeah. uh, but what's the thread? has to be that the commonality between everything is the performer, is the person that's standing yes, there singing and performing is. the songs. And it's we want to know their journey, their connection to the material. Absolutely, absolutely. And what's wonderful and what I did when I was artistic director of German Street were present a few artists who've had quite a lengthy career. So Liam Montevecchi talking about her career from uh, Paris in the 50s and Brando to performing in Nine and getting a Tony on Broadway and just going through the different elements of a career and giving relevant songs. If you've had a life that rich, you can do it. Mm. Donna McKechnie talking about the first time she danced with Fred Astaire, you want to listen to. Mm -hmm. These people have got a story to tell. If you've got a story to tell and it's your life, that's great. But not everyone has yet. Mm. Now, some people are paying because they want to see the performer. People are buying into seeing Megan Hilty or Megan Mullally or Maureen Lippmann. But if you're not well known, then it goes back to your set because people aren't buying into seeing you unless they love the venue and are just seeing what's on there. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be another hook. And what is that? Is it a particular songwriter mm. who's not been heard of for a long while? Mm. Is it an interesting story that is being interpolated with song? You know, there, there are different reasons why people will come. Mm. And it is harder for someone who hasn't got a reputation because what is the hook that's going to get people in or interested? Mm. 
or are you relying on the venue to do that? In which case, make sure what you're doing is... Good. There's a danger, though, isn't there, for if, if, if they're the parameters uh, for people new to cabaret, there's a danger that they all get very self-indulgent and, and stop thinking at all about what the audience might want to listen to and they just do what they want to... Uh, what the, the material that they need to tell their own story because they're the songs that they're passionate about. Do you think artists should have any concern about commercial... Uh, uh, this commercial success of a show, or is that not their job? Well, the producer in me, and, it, and it's a very, very subjective thing, is put on what you like and hope the other people like it. For me personally, if I try to put on stuff that I think will be commercial, I'm on a hiding to nothing. I'm doing something I'm not passionate about with no guarantee that people are going to come and see it. So even if it's sold out, you still wouldn't feel particularly dissatisfied because you didn't like the project in the well, first place? I'd be thrilled if it sold out, but, but, but I can't guarantee that it would sell out. Well, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be weeping as you'd be counting all that money. You'd think, I'm creatively dissatisfied. <laughs> not at all, but my, my, point, my point is, if it didn't hit the public note and it was something I didn't enjoy, it would have been a journey for nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can't second guess the audience are going to come. I'm not going to try... Uh, conversely, and... if you did something that didn't really sell very well but was a wonderfully artistic experience... At least and, I had a rich uh, artistic experience. Exactly, yeah. You know, and, and, and everyone needs to figure out what they can do. I'm very pro-commerce. I'm very pro-making money for a living. All I'm saying is you can't guarantee it. So if you're going to be presenting art, you have to present art you believe in. Yeah, but if individual performers are, are doing that and no one's coming to see it, I don't think they're going to be around for very long. Fine. So, you know, if you, if you know there is an audience for a particular thing, if you know there is an audience, of course play to it. What I'm saying is you can't do it on the hope that there's an audience for it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Les Miserables was great. I think I'll put together a song through musical that looks at an ancient classic. That's not good enough. Les Miserables works because that particular show was written by the right people and was well crafted. Um, it's not about doing a great piece of literature sung through. I've asked a lot of people about uh, to, to name their favourite cabaret performer, and a name that comes up a lot is Maria Friedman, who right. I know you've worked with. Yes. What do you think makes her special? I think Maria has exceptional instincts. I mean, I've worked with Maria as a director, and I've worked with Maria as a performer, um, and she understands her material, she understands how to tell a story through song, she has a huge respect for composers and musicians, and she gets a joy out of sharing great music with her audience. Um, and she's an incredibly engaging personality. And I think that combination works together very well to create a wonderful evening's entertainment. Also, she pushes herself. She thinks, right, I've done that, what can I do now that I want to do but frightens me, but I know if I got it right would be really satisfying. Mm. So she's not doing the same show. The show she did at the Hippodrome was Lenny and Steve. She has done a lot of Sondheim, of course, but she did a, a show for me called The Great British Songbook, where she delved into the rich catalogue of British musical and theatre and available on CPR Records. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think that's what makes her a great artist. And in her bones, she has musical theatre bones. She knows what works and what doesn't. And it's interesting seeing her as a director, you know, her instinct. She did a, a workshop for me of a new musical at the Watermill Theatre. And she just knew instinctively what works and what doesn't. And that's something that not everybody has. Do you think uh, newcomers to cabaret or even seasoned cabaret performers should have, would benefit from a director? Yes. On that point, actually, there's a master class with Maria on the 25th of October. That sounds like an incredible opportunity. Yeah, at the St James Theatre as part of this festival where s students will be singing cabaret songs and she'll be giving feedback in front of an audience and it's first come, first served, so, it's, you know, it's a free event. How can people mm -hmm. find There'll out There'll be about a press release for the London Festival of Cabaret um, shortly, but I think it's londonfestivalofcabaret.com. It will be online from July, mm. uh, so you can get your details there. Mm. Um, and so, you think, are there any other performers that you'll put on a par with, Maria, that do it for you when you go, when you, when you go and see Cabaret as, a, as, a, as an audience member? Douglas Hodge, Mandy Patinkin, Adam Gettle, Jason Robert Brown, Maria, Audra MacDonald. I think these are all exceptional talents who have a passion for song. And also a lot of them are hyphenates. I find this very interesting. I find a lot of these people are... Douglas Hodge is a director, a songwriter and an actor. Maria is a director and an actor. Gwyneth Herbert, who I think is an exceptional talent, is a songwriter and a performer. And these people tend to have more than one discipline. And I don't know what it is, 
but in a creative environment, sometimes you get something very exceptional from these kind of artists. You were going to tell me before... About directors. About directors, yeah. Yeah, I mean, another pair of eyes is very important. Um, whether you can afford a director or not doesn't matter. What you need is somebody you can trust. That's not to denigrate directors, of course, pay a fee and get a great director. Mm. But if you can't, you need a pair of eyes of somebody that you trust to tell you what they feel works and doesn't. And it's not right or wrong. You then pair that with your own instincts and see if you agree. You know, a lot of songs, a lot of shows, the patter can be excruciating. Mm. And if someone says that joke is just too crude, then lose it. It's too crude. Mm. You know. And it is important, isn't it? Because I've seen people, some people that I know well, that are friends, yeah. some people that I don't know well but I've been introduced to after a show, yeah. after seeing them perform. And sometimes the, the, the show's been... Everybody has agreed it's universally awful, but nobody in the room says that to the performer. Yeah. Everybody's kind and nice and, oh, great show, we loved it, blah, 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 or they don't say anything at all. Mm. But nobody says to them, you really need to go away and work it or cut this mm. or look at the da-da-da. And uh, because most people are sort of nice, and unless we're getting reviewed by professionals and it's going to be in print, and no one's going to tell us, except a director. Mm, that's true. Except a director or an interested party. So difficult to find impartial, sort of educated... Um, third parties, isn't it? And People... how it's communicated, because we've all got de de sensitive egos, you know, that's fine, but you don't really welcome 40 people telling you it's awful, even if you think that you do because it will just destroy you mm. and there are a lot of people that have done terrible work that have learnt and got better and better and become great there are a lot of people that will never get better and shouldn't be doing it I certainly can't be the arbiter of that taste And so what are you looking forward to with the festival? So with the festival we've got Michael Feinstein at the Palace which is very exciting Alexander Armstrong and his band performing the Great British Songbook at the St James Theatre Barb Younger, Mad About the Boy and No Regrets at the Soho Theatre um, It's a great title isn't it? It is think Good title is important isn't it? I think it very, very much so uh, A Maria Friedman Masterclass um, as I've mentioned I think Shona White, Shona Daly and Shona Lindsay hopefully will be doing a little show at the Pheasantry for us, the three Shonas. Um, and yes, come along and enjoy, please. It runs from mid-October to mid-November and will be on the London Festival of Cabaret.com website from next month. Thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world and get paid to do what you love.